what comparisons can you make to what went on in the Freddie Gray case and what's going on now with the, with the Floyd case? So one thing I will say is that, um, which is pretty unfortunate, whole lot of um, black people um, have been murdered, unarmed black people have been murdered by police officers. Um, the number of black people murdered by police officers since 2012 is it's like over 1600 men and at least like 80 women. So it, it happens a lot. Some of these cases go viral and some of them don't. Um, Freddie Gray's case went viral because it was, it came at the foot end of a bunch of other police murders. So it was jumping from state to state to state. And we were seeing the same thing. These unarmed black people were being murdered by police officers and then the cops were never held accountable. So by the time it reached Baltimore, it was kind of a tipping point. I think the similarity between Freddie Gray and George Floyd is that you have a video, you have a bunch of people who are anxious, you have a bunch of people who are tired of dealing with these oppressive systems. And with Floyd, I think that it's people been in the house for over two months dealing with the pandemic. So many people are out of work and not making money. So many people feel like the system hasn't been there for them. Since this last person became president, they feel even less, they have less of a stake in American society. So it's just like effort. And that was just kind of like the straw that broke the camel's back. So I think um, I think the cases are very similar. Um, I, I hope that the result is different. Um, I, I hope and pray that no one else is hurt. And I hope that the police officer, the police officers actually does go to jail. A lot of people don't know this, but I try to tell people every chance I get. The six officers involved in the killing of Freddie Gray, still, they're still Baltimore City police officers right now. They're working, they got back pay, they're taking care of their families, they're doing well. Um, they even tried to sue um, because they felt like they did nothing wrong, even though he was totally fine and he died in their custody. I know a lot of folks who are not of our community will wonder what, what are those things, those elements that made this so universal? Can you talk to that? Um, I think the elements is just the history of police culture in general, and that's why so many people relate. I think um, there's, there's a lot of white people who are sick and tired of seeing how police treat people of color. They're tired of it. So when they get to the point where they're tired of something that they don't got to deal with, then you're creating this universal pull and this effect where everybody feels like they want to get involved and they want to do something and they, they want to be in the streets and they want to protest. And some of them even want to take it a step, a, a level higher and get violent. And that, that's just, that's been the case. I guess I know you, like I, just worry that the wrong elements sometimes are in these groups. And there were elements like that in the Freddie Gray case. How do you, how do you look at that? It's, it's, so it's difficult when we talk about the wrong elements because the system allows wrong elements to, to happen inside of their own system. So it's like, you know, I, I'm not, I don't advocate violence. I don't want to see people get hurt. I know, I know some of them kids personally. I taught some of those kids who are still arrested because of what happened in Baltimore in 2015. Um, they're still trying to piece their lives back together, you know, even though so many activists and, 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 and revolutionary types who go on tour and speaking engagements talking about, we were in Baltimore, we in the streets. And I'm like, no, you wasn't. You was in a house because me and Devin was at everything. We went, and we didn't go there to incite or to add the violence. We went there to document it because it was historical. So with documentarians, we're going around and we're taking pictures and we're writing and we're putting this information together so that real narratives are out there. If people are doing something peaceful, you need to know. If police officers are, are doing things they shouldn't be doing, you need to know. Somebody has to hold the system accountable. So I don't know about you, but I am surprised at the global reach of this incident. Um, you know, I have seen st reports from out of South Africa. I've seen reports from out of Paris and all over the globe, literally. New Zealand, did you see New Zealand? <laughs> yeah. yeah. New Zealand, it stretched for blocks. I said, oh my God. Like... <laughs> right. Why, why are people so connected 
to this? I mean, is it is it the humanity issue that's driving this? I know you talk about the police, but is part of it the humanity of it? I also think that, you know, the more you look into George Floyd and the more you see what kind of person he was and you see his videos and you see, you know, like you just said, the humanity of who he was, I think that's something that struck a nerve in people too. Because we come, again, we're coming off of um, Ahmed Aubrey, um, the young man who was gunned down in Georgia for jogging down the street. Uh, we're coming off Breonna Taylor, the young woman who was in her house when the police raided the wrong house and murdered her. So we're coming off of um, we're coming off of this, and then this happens with a clear video, and then you look into the person who it happened to, and you're like, wow, he was a, a a rapper. Wow, he was an activist. Wow, he was working to be a pastor. Wow, he was a person that had a, a voice and in, in his community. He was telling young people to put the guns down, to get off the street. He he was telling old people, you know, older guys, you're not a big brother and you're not a good friend. If you're not out here advocating for these young people, he was posting videos saying that positive stuff, saying some of the stuff that, like, you know, we wish our uncles and fathers would have said to us, but a lot of them wasn't really around. He, he was doing that stuff. So I think when you see that and you're like, wow, he's just like dude from my neighborhood. He's just like dude from up the street, regardless of what color you are. If it doesn't strike a nerve, then you're not human. I want to kind of end on this. There is a big rally tonight. In Baltimore. What are your hopes for that rally? Uh, the good news, we haven't had seen the type of violence that's spread across this country. But what are your hopes for tonight's rally? I hope people get to connect and fellowship. I hope people get to um, express themselves and be heard. And I hope that there's not a trace of, of violence. Like, I just don't, you know, I, I I don't want to see anybody get in trouble. I don't want to see anybody, you know, you can be the number one front revolutionary, uh, whatever type of person. And as soon as they put them cuffs on you, when you get, you get them charges, you're not, you're not coming home. You want to be sad for five years. Um, I also hope that people wear masks because the pandemic isn't over. And um, I just, you know, I don't want to see people get sick. I don't want to, you know, I don't want people to get sick because, you know, we're still fighting that too. And African-Americans have been suffering at a, at a higher rate. So, you know, I don't want us to forget that. Dee Watkins, thanks for joining us here on Maryland Public Television. Thank you.